The DNA will get you every time. It's how the suspect in the mid-November stabbing deaths of four Idaho students was finally tracked down and arrested. That's what we learned when the affidavit of probable cause was unsealed in Idaho court this week. Investigators had found a leather knife sheath on the bed of one of the victims. They found a DNA sample on the button of the sheath. This and the cell phone records tracing his whereabouts capped the many weeks long investigation. That included narrowing down which white Hyundai Elantra had been captured on videos in the neighborhood of the house where the killings took place. A Washington State University officer then located a 2015 white Hyundai Elantra in an apartment complex parking lot. The owner's driver's license information and photograph were consistent with a surviving roommate's description of the masked suspect's height and build and bushy eyebrows. Additionally, five days after the murders, the suspect had obtained a new license plate for his car. The car was located at the suspect's family residence in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. CNN has reported he was under surveillance and he was seen cleaning his car inside and out using surgical gloves and depositing trash in the wee hours in a neighbor's garbage can. On December 27, Pennsylvania law enforcement discovered that trash and sent it to the Idaho State Lab for DNA testing. The very next day, the lab was able to match a DNA profile obtained from the trash as all but assured as being from the biological father to a person whose DNA was found on the knife sheath. As the document states, at least 99.9998% of the male population would be expected to be excluded from the possibility of being the suspect's biological father. Joining me now is C.C. Moore, head of genetic genealogy services for Parabon Nano Labs Law Enforcement Unit, which has made more than 200 successful identifications of violent criminals. She's not worked the Idaho case. She stars in the documentary series, The Genetic Detective, now streaming on ABC, and she is also has worked on all 10 seasons of the PBS television documentary series, Finding Your Roots, with Henry Louis Gates Jr. Cece, thank you for being here. What does this mean, single source of male DNA, which I'm reading from the affidavit? It means there were no other DNA detected on that, meaning sometimes you can have a mixture. You can have multiple people's DNA. You want to have single source DNA, if at all possible, because that really just ties that one person to that item. Now, it was likely that this was touch DNA. Certainly it's possible there was blood. They didn't tell us what type of DNA, but most likely it was touch DNA. And that would typically be just a few skin cells. This might've been a very small amount of DNA, but because of today's technological advances, we can detect even the tiniest bit of DNA. How reliable is touch DNA if it is skin cells in comparison to say blood? It's a great question. It is more transferable. So of course you would like to have blood. You would like to have semen or saliva and they might, you know, they haven't shown all their cards. We don't know all that they have, but touch DNA, now that we can use it because of the sensitivity of our equipment, it also means you have to be more cautious about using DNA as your only evidence. So it's a really positive thing that they clearly have other evidence. This is just one piece of it. We have seen DNA, touch DNA transfer in other cases. Of course, it's fairly rare, but it is something that you have to be aware of and make sure that there are other aspects of the case also pointing at the same person. Cece, good news, I guess. It's hard to commit murder without leaving something behind. That's right. Yeah, I've been saying this for weeks. That type of violent, intimate crime, it is virtually impossible not to leave something behind, even if you are a criminology PhD student. So I am not at all surprised they were able to find something. Even if he tried hard not to leave something, you still would. And that is great news, because what it means is that anyone who perpetrates this type of crime in the future should be aware that they will be identified. They will be caught. There really is no reason that we should see serial killer, serial rapist moving forward. 
this guy, you know, potentially could have become a Ted Bundy or even a Zodiac, not identified 50 years later. But because of the DNA technology, the advances that we're seeing, both in investigative genetic genealogy and the ability to use tiny amounts of DNA, we can identify someone, whether they are in the law enforcement database or not. Cece, the, the cases that you have cracked for which you have become famous are the cases that necessitate you putting together with, in connection with a private lab, a very complicated family history, family tree, and tracing back cousins and generations. That doesn't seem to be what took place here. Well, I don't think we can reach that conclusion yet. Investigative genetic genealogy is simply a tip. It's a lead generator. It should never be used as evidence against a suspect. And so it is proper that it would have been left out of the affidavit, in my opinion, because it should not form the basis of an arrest warrant. And so even though they didn't put it in there, I don't think we can rule it out. We don't know whether it was what initially identified him as a person of interest, and then they looked more closely at that tip about the car, or it could have gone the other way, where they identified him through that tip about the car, and at the same time, they were working on the genetic genealogy and may have built his family tree to see if it was consistent with what they were seeing. I have done that in some cases. If there are persons of interest, you can very quickly rule them out or potentially not be able to exclude them, which is what would have happened in this case. Maybe they could have co connected him to one or more of those matches, maybe a second, third, fourth cousin, and said, look, you know, this is somebody who is a strong person of interest. So I think there's still a lot for us to learn on what happened here. I do think it is highly likely that an advanced private outside lab was used, at least somehow in this case. You know, we've all been hearing whispers of this. There's been lots of leaks that investigative genetic genealogy was used. So I do right. think that they were at least trying to or in the process and, of doing and, so. And you make a great point. They, they, of course, don't have to put in this affidavit of probable cause. They, the prosecutors, all that they have. Cece Moore, that was tremendous. I thank you as always.